Hi everybody, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Bowman Baseball Hobby Break 12 box. Pick your team number six from jazbeescasebreaks.com. No vet paper, no rookie paper, no prospect paper ships, but Bowman first do ship paper wise. Bowman first do all, obviously all chrome card ship, all hits, all numbered paper and chrome, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously all autograph ship, so on and so forth. But just this group. This group of paper does not. Very big thanks to everyone here for getting in on it. Appreciate it. On Sunday, May 8th, Mother's Day. Thanks, everyone. Pick your team six. There's everybody right here. Now, if you have a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in the, uh, in the filler. And then I think last spot mojo officially went to Jesse and the Mariners. So thanks, uh, however you got in, appreciate you getting in. Maybe that was Last Spot Mojo, right? Yeah, Hobby Six Mariners. All right, well, let's do it, good luck. Let's do a break where only paper-based ships is GLO. I don't think we'd be in business very long. Because no one would be buying our breaks. All right, so as you know by now, Hobby is one autograph per box. Well, you're still not a mother, even if someone calls you that, Rex. So that's why. We got uh, Oilers at Kings on in the background. Dodgers were Sunday night was a Sunday night baseball. They were leading the Cubs seven one in the bottom of the ninth. So I think, barring a disaster, I don't I think they'll be fine. So I was okay to switch the channel. Kings has been been destroyed last couple games, but let's see if they could make keep things interesting here. Right, box one. Good luck. Sandra Earhart in the Army, not not the Air Force. Yeah, we gotta hit you with both anthems. Oh, so if, if you were wondering, that won't ship, that won't ship, that won't ship, that won't ship either. Obviously, that's a chrome insert, that'll ship. So these Bowman first will ship. 
What do you do with all the paper base anyway? Gilo's asking. That's a common question. What we do is we box them up into like 400 count boxes. We sell them and donate the money to charity. Usually, uh, that's what we do with all the, the vet commons that we don't end up shipping. So it goes to a good cause. Yeah, it is. That is pretty dope, right? There's Wilman Diaz, Speckle, to 199, 005 out of 199 for the Dodgers. That'll be for Chris. And we're going to have our sorting and shipping team sleeve and top load those. I will set those aside, though, so they can be taken care of. But just in the interest of time, this break is kind of long enough already. There's Joey Gallo, Purple Paper, 78 out of 199. For the Yankees, that's going to go to Garrett. <laughs> right, and if there's any vet commons left over, then, uh, then yeah, if the business goes under, we'll take those vet commons, we'll sell them underneath the bridge to, uh, to just get by. All right, there's our autograph, one per box. It's Edgar Cueto, 136 out of 149. Mark Bissett and the Angels. And we'll do an autograph recap, of course, at the uh, at the end. I think she's a season ticket holder, is what the PA announcer said. It's pretty cool. Do you think, uh, Rex asking if I think the Star Spangled Banner is the most sung song in American history. <laughs> no, Rex, come on. Come on, Rex. It's obviously happy birthday.
how many sporting events is that every day, Rex? How many millions of people have birthdays every day? There's probably a million people with a birthday today. Three quarters of those million people probably saying happy birthday, if not all. All right, box two. Jaspies needs a jingle. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I could write a jingle. Yeah, I did bring in the guitar the other night. I was goofing around, or last week, I think. Maybe I'll bring it in tomorrow for maybe work on a Jaspy jingle. Rex, I wasn't thinking of happy birthday. You weren't thinking, Rex. That's what it comes down to. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm assuming that's what it, I actually don't know if it's really happy birthday. I'm, that's just my guess. I'm assuming it is. Unpopular opinion, Gilo says, you don't like the singing of God Bless America. Here's Jordan Lawler, 437 out of 499. At, at sporting events, you mean? Why are, why are we going to sing more? We already did the Star Spangled Banner. Why do we got to sing more? I think, I think not all stadiums do that anymore. There's Bobby Wood Jr. To, uh, blue paper for the Royals. That'll be for Andrew. Andrew's song. We're talking about songs right now. There is Branlin uh, Haraba for the Brew Crew. Mark with Milwaukee. And again, we'll do an autograph recap at the end of this break. Where did, I think, God Bless America at, during the seventh inning, I think that first started post 9-11, I want to say. I think first baseball games in New York, they started doing that. And then it kind of, I want to say, then it kind of got... Kind of became a thing, and then I think a lot of other ballparks adopted it too. But now I think some ballparks don't do it, right? There's Wilman Diaz, Aqua to 125 for the Dodgers. That'll be for Chris. I must have missed a chat of yours, Rex. You're saying I can agree, though, because when a Canadian team's playing, you also have to hear the Canadian anthem. Like I missed a, a chat or something like that. All right, Gilo's saying, yeah, for hockey games, I don't even know, but see, I don't think hockey does. Does do hockey teams do God Bless America? When would they do that? Because like seventh inning stretch is like a nice break where you can have a song.
Do they do two anthems in Canada? If I actually don't know this. If they must, right? <laughs> well, obviously they don't. They don't feel it. But do they do Star Spangled Banner if an Ameri when American team plays in Toronto? Yeah, there's no God Bless America in Toronto, Gila. But I'm assuming they do both anthems. Do they do both? Someone in Toronto, let me know. Or someone who's been to a game in Toronto, let me know. In hockey, they traditionally do two anthems, but I don't know. I don't think they do a God, God Bless America. Although it has been years since I've been to a Kings game, but... I don't. I don't remember a God Bless America like in between like the the the, th the three periods. Maybe there is. I don't know. <laughs> or America, Rex. <laughs> it's Canadians. All right, next box. And the auto pop popping early. This Wilman Candelario. Bowman first autograph for Andrew and the Royals. What's my unpopular opinion? I don't have unpopular opinions. All my opinions are popular opinions. Shane Boz to 399. Lime green paper for Tampa Bay. None that I will share with you, Gilo. I will not share my unpopular opinions with you. Because that might that might uh, be someone might disagree with that unpopular opinion and then stop buying at jaspiescasebreaks.com. So all my opinions are safe. <laughs> I agree with everything and nothing. Just keep buying your spots, jaspiescasebreaks.com. There's a junior, San Quentin. Uh, 102 out of 250, purple lava. 
Yay! Opening goal for the Kings. I'll take it. I wonder if Jason's at this game. I should text him. Yeah, I'm part of a corporate machine, Gilo. What's that? I know it's only for a minute, but it's bad out here right now. Uh, well, have you been fiddling with that? I, because it doesn't work. Whoever's been trying to fiddle with that, it's it's fruitless. Yeah, you can turn that off. Do I, what do I think about aliens? Do they exist? No, they don't. Not 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 in the way that that we have have defined aliens in in popular media, in popular television and movie programs. Here. It's a good goal. Life? Life in general? Yeah. I believe in that. I mean, the Statistically, statistically, it, uh, you know, like it has to have happened or happen in. See, it's just the likelihood of that life being intelligent enough to visit us is that likely. Probably not. You know, there could have also been intelligent life 10 million years ago that was, that could be a hundred times more advanced in our society today that, that died out hundreds of millions of years ago, but we would never know. So the, the chance, the odds of, the odds of life existing, yes, it's there. Dayton Dooney is here too. That's another royal for Andrew. But intelligent life evolving at the same time and coming out to find us for whatever reason I don't know how likely that probability is that's right grizzlebees what's going on yeah the alien aliens won't be here or not in this chat room You saw NASA sending naked drawings of humans out to space. I mean, that makes sense, right? Why would you send pictures of a clothed human out there? There's Henry Davis to 125. Blue paper for the pirates. That'll be for chat. There's Woman Diaz, 25 out of 150. Trust me, I know my marsh is when I see one, and that was clearly a marsh. Could be a bog. A bog? Well, were you in the Everglades? 
Will there be more picker teams for Bowman after this wave of breaks sold out? No. I think so. We should have another batch on the way. Uh, 78 out of 150, Blue Lava, Joshua Baez. That'll be for Greg and the Cardinals. I can't assure you that they'll be at this current price, though. Grizzlebees, depending on what the how the market has changed, this could be the next batch could be at a higher price. I'm surprised he hasn't already wrecked. I guess he's busy buying Twitter. All right, next box. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what happened. What happened in baseball today? Are all games a final? Yeah, I think the last game was the Dodgers-Cubs game. All games are a final, ladies and gentlemen, on a Sunday, on a Mother's Day. White Sox beat the Red Sox in Boston, 3-2. Abreu gets a two-run double, and the White Sox complete the sweep. Uh, in Philadelphia, Phillies beat the Mets, 3-2. Harper had a little shout-out to Mom after a home run. Here on Mother's Day, Phil's top Scher Scherzer in the Mets. First of the doubleheader. Gilo's Royals beat the Orioles, 6-4. Taylor and Royals rally past error-prone O's to open the twin bill. Oh, I haven't gotten to that part, Grizzlebees. I'm just scrolling down the scoreboard here. Braves uh, in Atlanta beat the Brewers, 9-2. Braves bats roll. And Morton beats Brewers for a series win. Adam Duvall, William Contreras chipped in with homers. In New York, the Yankees edged out the Rangers 2-1. Glaber Torres in the ninth lifts Yankees over the Rangers at a, at a walk off. To lead off the ninth. Game over. Reds. Five wins now. They beat the Pirates 7-3. Colin Moran hits a grand slam and a two-run homer. Wow. The revenge game. Colin Moran's on the Reds now. Guardians edge out the Blue Jays 4-3. Oscar Mercado had a tie-breaking two-out single in the eighth for that extra run. In Houston, Astros shut out the Tigers 5-0. Grand slam by Adledniz Diaz. And Jake Odorizzi threw five innings of one-hit ball. Twins edge out the uh, A's, 4-3. Polanco, Twins, bullpen and A's to ninth straight loss. Ouch. Giants beat the Cardinals, 4-3. Mike Yastrzemski with a homer. With a tie-breaking homer into McCovey Cove. And there's the second game of the doubleheader. There's, there you go. Mets beating the Phillies, 6-1. And another homer for Pete Alonso. The Mets split the doubleheader with the Phillies. And I'll have some late games for you when I open the next box. All right, onwards. Thank you. 
I think these atomic parallels are one per box, not numbered, but the atomic atomic autos are numbered. There's a Benny Montgomery, 005 out of 299. Speckle for the Rockies. That'll be for Andrew. And we got a Speckle Auto. 165 out of 299. Jose Ramos, Bowman first autograph for, for Chris. Chris M. and the Dodgers. Rated number 16 prospect in the Dodgers farm system, according to MLB.com. Oh yeah, what's happening in that game, Gilo? Forgot about the Sixers Heat game. There's Max Muncy, not that Max Muncy, but prospect Max Muncy. That's a goal for the Kings, nice. There's Max Muncy, 61 out of 250, purple lava for Chad and the, uh, no, sorry, not Chad and the Pirates, but Mark and the A's. Gino saying that James Harden looks like a looks like a player's dad out there. The Angels, they've got 19 wins now. They're, they beat the Nationals 5-4. Berea with the win. And uh, Rainey with the loss. Diamondback shut out the Rockies 4-0. Zach Allen, sharp in seven innings. Apparently Arizona's starters have taken turns stringing together quality starts all season. Got Padres edged out the Marlins 3-2. Alfaro mashes pinch hit three-run homer in the ninth. Wow. In extras, Mariners edged out the Rays 2-1. Toro from France rally Mariners past the Rays. Abraham Toro hit a tying homer in the ninth, and Ty France singled home the, the winning run. I think Ty France is, is amongst the league leaders in ribbies. Uh, second game of the Rangers Yankees doubleheader. Yank uh, Rangers win this one, 4 2. Brad Miller snapped Michael King's impressive scoreless streak with a pinch hit two run homer. And looks like the Orioles also split the doubleheader. Royals at Orioles. Orioles beat the Royals 4 2 with Bruce Zimmerman throwing six effective innings. I think I left him on my bench in my fantasy team. Damn. And Walker Bueller pitched seven sparkling inning innings in his 100th career start. Dodgers beat the Cubs on Sunday Night Baseball in the ESPN 7-1. The LA Kings up 2-0 on the Edmonton Oilers for now.
This Jose Ramirez, Terry saying don't look now, but Jose Ramirez quietly kicking butt. It's not a surprise though, he's a good hitter. That's the guy. And Carlos Guire to 150, Blue Lava for the Twins. That's going to be for Darren. And some yellow paper. That's Roni Maurizio. 71 out of 75. Yellow paper for the Mets. That'll be for Joe and the Metropolitans. Purple paper, nice little color match with the team. 184 out of 250, Colton Welker for Andrew and the Rockies. And another Jose Ramos, this time gold, 37 out of 50. For the Dodgers, that'll be for Chris and the boys in blue. So one auto a box. So we've got the auto. Let's see if we have any more parallels. All right, we are officially halfway through this 12-box hobby case break. This is Pick Your Team 6. All right, good luck. Take a look at the standing. I don't think we looked in this. Uh, looked at the standings in a couple days. I don't know if much has changed. Yankees still leading the AL East. They lost a game, but there's eight wins in their last ten. Rays also have seven wins in their last three. Toronto's dropped a couple in a row. They've only won four of their last ten. Orioles have uh, won five. They're five and five in their last ten. Red Sox. What's going on with the Red Sox? Five in a row. Oh, I think they, I think they had lost some players to the COVID IL maybe. So I think they've lost a couple key players. But they've only won two in their last ten. They dropped five in a row.
Rex says, know what a fun thing, what would be a fun thing to watch? Someone did stories on what retired sports players are doing today. Each episode could look at a, one player from each sport. I could do that right now. Rick and Keel, what's he up to today? He's coaching his son's baseball team in high school. I think the problem with that is some, sometimes I think not all retired players are doing exciting things. This guy went into business. <laughs> this guy runs a bunch of franchises. Of subway franchises. Right, yeah, I heard that too. I... Rick Ankeel is a high school coach. I don't know. I think I think ball players have spent so many so much of their careers being interviewed. A lot of times these guys want to retire and then just stay out of the spotlight. I feel like it could be interesting, but that'd be a tough show to produce. You know, to track down the retired players that want to be tracked down and actually want to talk about what they're doing and have what they're doing be compelling enough for an episode. Ah, Gilo. Not only with the COVID IL stuff, Gilo also has uh, Trevor Story and Verdugo. They're underperforming. There's Zayed Salinas, 16 out of 399, Lava. That'll be for the Padres E8 with the Friars. First episode, OJ says Grizzly. Hasn't he gotten enough attention? I don't think he needs an episode in that show. Bo Sox bullpen not very good this year too, Terry's mentioning. Gilo saw an interview with Vin Scully after retiring. They asked him, what was he up to? He said, I went to Home Depot. <laughs> nice, Vin. And he got on Twitter. There's Charlie Blackman. Paper to 499. There's Ronnie Enriquez, third, uh, 93 out of 250. That'll be for Mark and the Rangers. It's a nice purple chrome auto. Always nice to get some color. There's Fidel Montero, green paper to 399. I think what Re I think what Rex re really wants is uh, is what are old Cubs from my childhood doing now? Is the show that he wants. Make it a Jiminy Glick thing, where he doesn't know anything about the player. I don't know. That's a stretch now, Rex. You want uh, you want former athletes who know nothing about comedy to be involved in bits. I don't know. I don't think they. I don't think athletes would get it, and they'd quickly not want to do it. 
Oh yeah, Mark Ray still crushes his hair. First episode should be Tiger Woods when that happens, but like, see, Tiger Woods probably wants to be in the public light. He'll just be an ambassador for golf. It's an interesting idea, but you got, it's like, it'll take work to find like, like people who are retired, but not in the public light, but are still doing something interesting in their post-retirement career outside of, yeah, I, I run a, a sports consulting like business. <laughs> You know, or something like that, you know? So it just kind of, that's the challenge. A lot of times these, these retired guys aren't really doing anything that exciting. Ooh, Tigers in here in Tulsa this week. People are going nuts. That is, that tournament is... Soon, I think. A right. couple weekends, I think. Is it this weekend? Maybe it is. Maybe you're right. The PGA Championship? Either way, soon. Terry, are you going to go to any of the days? Cody Bellinger had, had went three for four today. 19. There's Matt Frazier, blue shimmer to 150. There's Pedro Leon to 150. Blue Lava for the Astros. That'll be for Steve. Stephen Carney with that one. Got some paper here. There's Sedan Rafaela to 499. Uh, for the Red Sox, Mark with the Red Sox. Gilo, is that PGA 2K game good? Yeah, uh, I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. Here's the autograph. There's Elijah Cabell. Yeah, I've, I've been playing that a lot over the weekend on my PS4. That is for Greg and the Cardinals. So the the PlayStation. I don't. I, I really don't play a lot of video games. The PlayStation was definitely a pandemic purchase. Um. And um. So at first I bought like this NASCAR game. That's really hard. <laughs> and I also got an F1 game too. Also really hard. Um, and I like I like auto racing, but it's it's there's a big learning curve to actually to try to like you know to actually race. I'll get into it at some point, but. The learning curve is pretty steep, and I'm just not very good at it. And I, I don't do a lot of gaming anyway. It's not like it's not like Mario Kart. I play a lot of Mario Kart, but um, and I I actually bought golf thinking that it was gonna be really hard. Like I was like, oh, this is gonna be really tough. Um, but it actually turned out to be kind of easy to learn.
So you can set it on, you can get it and set it on some pretty easy levels. And then you can, you know, there's a, you can have settings where there, there's a lot of assistance for you. So you can still like hit the ball around and have fun with it. And over time, you know, you can kind of start shedding some of the, the assistance or training tools or stuff like that. And it, uh, it gets to be pretty fun. You just don't know anything about golf. You got into football and baseball and as younger just because of video games. Well, I don't think it'll be too different, Gilo. You might get into golf just by playing the game. And the courses look really nice and... I don't know. It feels like we're watching golf. I enjoy watching the golf. I'm trying to get into actually the physical playing of golf this year. Right, yeah, you can get the smell of fresh cut, fresh cut grass in your screen, through your screen. But yeah, it's pretty fun. And I, I went into thinking went into it thinking that it wasn't gonna be as fun as I thought it was gonna be. And it's like fun to see your see your name on the leaderboard against like tour PGA tour golfers. That looks a little orangey. It, it is orange. It's JJ Blit A. 13 out of 25. Nice Bowman top 100 insert. Number eight overall, according to them. He's up there. Mark with the Marlins. Rex's original idea was he had the idea that she was thinking that I hadn't heard anything about Mark McGuire in forever. Don't see his auto too much in product. Logan says he's in flawless. Yeah, he is in the high end stuff. I don't think he's going to be sitting around grinding out autos for other stuff. Have you Googled him, Rex, if you're curious? Terry's got a little trivia for a little known fact about the Southern Hills Golf Course where the PGA is going for their next major. A mob hit took place in the parking lot back in the 80s. There is a Braylon Miner 
Purple paper to 199 and Ricardo Genovis. Gold chrome to 50. That'll be for the Giants. That's going to go to Bennett. And the purple paper will go to Mark and the Red Legs. It was Whitey Bulger who did the hit. I didn't know there was a mob presence in uh, mob presence in uh, Tulsa. Whitey Bulger, who is no longer with us, um, uh, was found. He was missing for a while. He was found in Santa Monica, California, maybe a mile, mile and a half away from where I live. There's Ronald Acuna Jr., blue paper to 150. I may, I may have walked by, you know, I may have walked by Whitey Bulger and his female companion a number of times and not known it. Could have been in front of me at a grocery store. And there's Jack Sawinski, Atomic Auto, 16 out of 100. Right, I remember that too. Yeah, the crazy thing about Bulger, all of his money stuffed in the walls of his apartment in Santa Monica. I don't think he's getting his deposit back, Terry. That was a good one. I'm here all week, folks. It was once rumored that Whitey Bulger may may know may have known the the whereabouts of that famous artwork stolen from the Gardner Museum in Boston. Thanks, Grizzlebees. Um, that, that there was the there was actually a, a recent Netflix sort of documentary about that the Gardner Museum heist. Um, I think it's still on Netflix, but it's really interesting if, if you're if you're into art heisty stories. But but uh, I don't know if Whitey Bulger was directly involved in it, but you know him being a pretty famous gangster in Boston that. He would have known something about it. So people out there may have been a connection, but I think uh, once, you know, because there's a thing where like criminals, criminal masterminds will steal artwork as a, as a way to, as a get out of jail card. Because imagine if you have a, a priceless Picasso laying around because you stole it from a Museum, you could be like, "Hey, I got one of these. I'll return these if you wanna, if you wanna reduce my sentence a little bit." So when Whitey Bulger was found and caught, they thought that he would. There was some speculation in the art community that he would reveal uh, the whereabouts, or at least know of the person who knows where all this famous artwork is hidden, Rembrandts and stuff like that. But no, he never revealed any of that. So now, still, still a mystery. Someone's got to have it, though. Imagine being his neighbor. Yeah, apparently all the neighbors said that they knew him by whatever alias that he was using. Oh, that's Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so when they would take a walk around town. and um, So I think... I, I actually don't know how he was come. I, there must have been a tip or something, but... They said they didn't really think anything of it. Just old retired couple living living uh, you know a few blocks away from the from the Santa Monica Cliffs overlooking the ocean. Nice spot, nice part of town. I did not see that. A woman bought a two thousand year old Roman bust from a Goodwill for thirty nine dollars. They don't know how it got to Goodwill, but they were stolen in Germany in World War II. I did not hear, but that's a cool story. Now she's returning to Germany. It belongs in a museum. But I'm glad there's some good Indiana Joneses out there.
You heard someone found an actual copy of the Declaration of Independence at a Goodwill-like store, Nicholas Cage style? Yeah, that's a little too national treasure, isn't it? I wonder if, uh, oh, here's an Edgar Guero, Orange Shimmer to 25. I wonder if Goodwill goes out and steals these things and then plants them in their own stores and sells them for really cheap. Just so they could be like, wow, look at what you could find at Goodwill. Go visit your local Goodwill. What if it's a big conspiracy? You could find 2,000-year-old Roman busts at, at your local Goodwill. Shop and donate your to your local Goodwill today. Visit Goodwill.com for more information. There's a good movie right there. Maybe Nicolas Cage could star in it. Goodwill, hiring people to steal art, plant them in their stores, sell them for ridiculously cheap. Just to drive business to Goodwill. Goodwill Hunted. Nice. Good one. Grizzle Beast. Nice. Uh, apparently the bust, according to Rex, was stolen from a museum by a U.S. soldier. It belongs in a museum. So do you, Dr. Jones. So do you. There's Wilman Diaz. To two ninety nine. Saw stories a couple years ago of someone finding a 2011 Topps update hobby box at a Goodwill, and it contained a trout. Chilo sometimes wanders around a Goodwill, see it every now and then for some cards. I feel like uh, I feel like now in the past couple of years, with with so much attention being put to cards, I feel like those stories are going to be fewer and far between. People are going to snap those up a lot more quickly, or those may not end up in a Goodwill at all. There's Hendry Mendez, 26 out of 299, speckle autograph for Mark and the Brewers. Nice, I like that speckle parallel. That'll be for Mark and the Brew Crew. And there's a Diego Rincones. Rincones, 47 out of 299. Fuchsia paper for the Giants. That'll be for Bennett and San Francisco. All right, next box. Second to last box, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. in here.
If Rex worked for a Goodwill in the sorting room, you'd have your eBay app open at all times. And deprive underprivileged people of quality items in your community, Rex? Just for your own profit, huh? Just always, Rex, always thinking, always thinking for himself. It's a doggy dog world, I guess, ladies and gentlemen. Teslas don't sound like that. Velo. The electric car, silent killers. Imagine someone just throwing away a 2011 Tops box to Goodwill, yeah. Probably someone's parents cleaning out the attic or something like that. They're like baseball cards. No one collects these anymore. <laughs> usually parents. Dustin Harris to four ninety nine. Rangers, that'll be for Mark in Texas. Parents just don't understand. All right, we got Micelle Urbina, 22 out of 199, Fuchsia, Lava. And we got Matt Vreeland. Paper to four ninety nine for the Phillies. That'll be for Justin. Garage sales, Gilo saying. Anyone find any good baseball cards at a garage sale? That's a good call. Terry saying flea markets in Tulsa gold mine for cards. There's Jose Fermin. Bowman first autograph for Mark and the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. Yeah, I'll bet you I'll bet you can find like people selling older cards. Right? Maybe by the by the 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 caseload. And you could probably be able to like grade some of those cards if you're lucky enough to find some that are that were in pretty good condition or stored nicely. And then you could be like, hey, maybe I can buy these for a song, and then and then uh, you can probably get some some cards graded and see what happens. Tim saying he, he cleaned out a thrift store in Northern California. Cleaned them out, he said. He 
Yeah, I, not not that I, 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 I should. I don't. I don't mind. I enjoy it when I do it. Not, not that I've gone to a lot of flea markets or thrift stores lately, but but uh, I haven't. I haven't really scored anything cool. I need to. I need to do that more. Maybe. Maybe after I win the lottery, retire, just rummage around rummage sales. Wow. Terry bought a binder of pristine 1952 Topps cards at a flea market. No rookies, but they look like they were freshly pulled from packs. Rex says, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube of people going to garage sale and thrift store looking for cards. I always have a body cam on. So curious how many are real, how many are staged. Yeah, I wonder. I feel like a lot of that could be, probably is staged or, or man, it's just a lot of, or it's just a lot of footage. <laughs> and a lot of editing, a lot, a lot of wearing, the, wearing a uh, camera around all day. Yeah, you know what? When, when that storage wars show was pretty big, Rex, I actually kind of looked into it. Just just to goof around. I just thought it'd be something funny, fun to do on a random day. But they're like, you got to get there early. You got to get there like at 6 in the morning and sign up or do all this sort of stuff to be part of the group that can auction for stuff. And then it's like an all-day thing and blah, 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 blah. And then what if you win the locker? Then it's yours. You got to then got to haul away stuff a lot of it could just be junk and so i looked into it but then i was like eh i'll just watch the the rigged storage wars on tv all right so the lady that terry bought the 52 tops from said she found the binders in the attic of a house they were flipping showed her what the mantle and robinson went for and she about fainted Imagine if there were some there, and they didn't. Those don't have to grade out very highly for you to get a, a real positive return. Oh. Refractor Will Wagner, seventy-five out of four ninety-nine. To put in a different pile there. Shoot! Oh! What a save. That's to 125. Reed Detmer's Aqua Parallel. I think he's been throwing the ball pretty well for the, for the Angels. And that's Mark with the Halos. Benny Montgomery, B -b -b Benny and the Jets. That's to 125. Rocks. That'll be Andrew, the Rockies. Redemption. And that's Oscar Colas for the White Sox. That's going to be for Michael. Nice. 
Is Austin Martin purple paper to 250? I think Oscar Colas is one of the bigger names here in this set. Virus OG saying, man, my Boston Red Sox suck this year. Well, they've got some injuries. They got some people underperforming. We're only a month and a half into the season. A lot of season left to go. Yeah, well, I'm in a primary for good storage units, but but Terry's right. What if I end up getting the unit with the with the dead guy in it? What do I do with that? Then I'm involved in criminal cases. What a waste of my time. To hear about in uh, in Lake Mead, the water levels in Lake Mead. I think it's Lake Mead. Are, are were got to a, a low level where they there's someone spotted a barrel sticking out of the water with a body inside. Maybe an old mob hit in the Vegas days. I don't know. Could be trying to figure it out. But here's a quick little recap. Pretty nice break, ladies and gentlemen. Some nice orange here in the hobby. So some good stuff, boys and girls. That was 12 box hobby case. Pick your team six of 2022 Bowman Baseball. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.